Good morning, happy Wednesday, and welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Want to give it a minute, give people a chance to log on. I'm very prompt today. Hi, Evan. Welcome back. So the title of this talk today is, Are You Making More Money in 2019 Than You Did in 2018? If you're not, we need to talk about it. Most of us as hairstylists never in a, in a million years thought that we were going to be business people when we entered into this industry. We thought we were going to get to do great hair, have fun at work, get to meet really interesting people. And we do get to do all of those things, but it is at the end of the day, a business and a way for us to provide a living for ourselves and you know put a roof over our head and give us all that we need in life. Can you guys hear me okay? I have a new microphone today. Hopefully it's good. So they say hindsight is 2020. That's a famous quote. Everybody says, oh, if I only knew now, if I only knew then what I know now, how much more successful would I be? But most people do know now more than they did before, but they're not taking advantage of it. And I'm sure most of you listening right now are going to be by the end of this chat saying, wow, I didn't realize that I was being that way. So we tend to get into this routine of showing up at work and just accepting what's on the book. It's just become part of life to, you know, prior to our schedules being on our phones, which is amazing, like that never happened when I was starting out. We would have to wait and show up and look at the book and it was written in pencil with all line, you know, lines on the paper and it was a mess, things were crossed out and, erase marks and so forth. So you guys all have online virtual versions of everything. So I was loving the last, I would say 10 years, being able to look at my schedule every single day on my phone. I would be able to see if a guest was booked for today and next Wednesday so that I didn't end up having an empty hole next Wednesday. So now we can predict the slow times by learning from last year. So if I asked you right now, if we were at a cocktail party and I said, what are your slowest times in your salon? When do you have the most downtime in the salon? You would kind of tilt your head sideways and be like, I don't know, I think, and you would just throw out a month. But do you really know? And you have all the information right here. All you have to do is look back in your schedule Go back to, what is today, May 15th. So when you when we hang up from this coffee chat, go on your schedule and look at May 15th of last year. Look at the names that are in your schedule last year. Are those names still on your schedule this year? They don't have to be today, but do you see names that you're like, oh, wow, I haven't seen her in forever. Where did she go? Sometimes we get so caught up in our daily grind, we forget to touch base and nurture the people that are our regular people. And all of a sudden they're gone. And then we're constantly looking for new, new, new. I see all of these people on all of the forums saying, how do I get more clients? How do I get more clients? If you paid more attention to the clients that you're losing and nurtured them and took care of them, you wouldn't have to constantly look for new clients. But I do want to talk today about slow times. We all have them and everyone's are different. I found a pattern in my own business that a high percentage of clients would take their vacation the first two weeks in August. For about five years, I sat and bitched about it in the back room saying, oh my God, I don't even know why I'm here. It's so beautiful. I should be at the beach right now. Why do I even show up? Nobody's here. And then all of a sudden I was like, well, hello, you've seen this happen five years in a row. So why don't you just take your vacation at the same time that they take their vacation and then you come back refreshed, ready to see everyone. And then your cycle stays the same, but you don't care because they weren't coming in anyway. It sounds so simple when you hear me say it, but are you doing that? Are you paying attention to the holes in your book and working around it? Do you notice that every fifth Tuesday, you have a slow day, make that the day that you take one day off a month and make that your day to run to the bank and do all the things that you can't do when you're working in those businesses that only have certain hours that you can't, you find yourself never being able to get to because you're off just on Sunday and Monday. 
So finding those patterns and plugging those holes will make a huge difference in your book. The other thing that I see, the trend right now, is lived in color. Everybody's jumping on board to lived in color. Nobody likes lived in color more than me. I love the look of it. I love the simplicity. And I love doing it but I'm not in the salon anymore. So I don't have to worry about the fact that that girl that I just spent four hours with giving her that flawless lived in color, I don't have to stress that she isn't going to have to see me more than twice a year. So my client base that I just left after 30 years of owning my salon, my core of my business are women with gray hair that would rather die than be seen with their gray hair. So they were coming to see me every four or five weeks. So I was able to be a six-figure colorist working three days a week because my client base was my age and they wanted to cover gray and they came frequently. So everybody's on Instagram and they all want to be that sassy, lived-in person that gives these great transitions and charges all these high prices, but don't forget about that woman that's in your chair every four weeks getting color, cut, condition, blow dry, you know, and so on and so on every single four weeks. So if you do the math, if you see someone for lived in color, even if you charge them $400 twice a year, that's $800 a year. Divide 800 by 12 that person who would have been your gray coverage client, don't snub your nose at that gray coverage client and be like, oh, I don't want to do old ladies. They're not old ladies. People are living so much longer. The money that people have to spend between 50 and the end, <laughs> for lack of a better word, women ages 50 and up have way more disposable income. Their houses are paid off. Their kids are out of college, most, or are you know, stringing along in the end. And their children either have already gotten married or aren't quite married yet. They're in this limbo in between where they're finding themselves with a little extra disposable income. So if you're on Instagram and you're doing the typical picture with the girl with her hands in her hair and it's the back of her head and it looks so pretty, what you're doing is you're actually showing other hairdressers that you're all that and you do a great job. And if that's what you're looking to do, if you want to be famous among other hairdressers for how good your work is, that's awesome. Keep doing that. But if you want butts in your chair and you want to make more money in 2019 than you did in 2018, think about who is going to pay your bills. Think about who your steady, loyal people are that come over and over and over again. So take a peek back. Go back in your calendar, start with January, <clears throat> look for trends, look for holes, look for most times what you will find your hole to be is your exact attrition number. Like say your average client comes every six weeks where you'll see weird weeks and weird holes is six weeks after you were not in the salon. You took a week off to go to somebody's destination wedding or you went on a cruise or you did, you finally took a vacation. And then you'll see those holes every six weeks for the entire year because you weren't there that week. So therefore those people aren't due to come in six weeks. And then that day in six weeks is slow. So then six weeks later, it's slow. <clears throat> so now that we know what happens, let's talk about how we can get ahead of it and do something different in 2019. Stop the insanity and stop just accepting those holes every six weeks and make a plan. So how many people on here have a plan? Do you have a plan? Comment and let me know if you have a plan, if you do something different than I'm aware of, or if you just accept what is, is. I'm guessing most people are accepting what is, is. So do something different starting right now and look back at last year, find that hole. Find out when it is. I'm guessing it's going to be July, August. Usually it's a lot of vacations, a lot of family vacation. Kids are out of school. Moms aren't worried about their hair being perfect. They're going in pools. They join a swim club. They play tennis. They play golf. They are caring less about their hair. They're wearing a lot of hats, stuff like that. So that tends to be a slow time. So instead of bitching, and complaining and feeling sorry for yourself that, oh, I just won't have any money in the summer and then I won't be able to go away. Think about the things that you can do that are low and no cost that will fill in that time with new 
clients. That should be the only time in your schedule that you're looking for new clients. The other parts of the year, you should be looking to nurture and care and give great customer service to the people you already see because it costs a lot more money to get a new butt in your chair than to keep and schmooze the person who's already there. And I think we forget that. I think we take advantage and take for granted the people that are the regulars that come all the time because you're like, oh, that's Sally. She's always gonna come. No, she's not. She has people who are doing what I'm telling you to do, who are looking at the holes in their book, looking ahead and running kick-ass promotions and running ads on Instagram, Facebook, doing things proactively to fill their own books and they're pulling your clients away from you. Your clients are going to get, especially if you're in the facial, eyelash, um, massage, those kind of things are treats that people don't feel as um, loyal to that person, unfortunately. They're like, oh, I went and got a massage at a spa on vacation. Or, oh, my friend was getting her eyelashes done and I was with her, so I got them done. It was a Groupon. They're the kind of people that are always going to jump. So they're always being pulled in another direction. Your clients buy that Groupon, that Rulala, that special thing that someone else was smart enough to do to get ahead of their slow time. Your, your client, if they don't feel that they're being appreciated, that you're showing them that you're on time, that you're giving them options for something new in their hair, maybe a few sparkle lights around the face that I always talk about in my courses. So these are all the things that we're going to talk about in my boot camp. For those of you that are just jumping on here that may be new to me and to my coffee chats, I'm doing a free five-day boot camp. It's called Hair Color Secrets Insider. And we're going to talk about a different topic every day for five days. You're going to receive an email with a lesson with you know all the facts that you can hold on to. It's printable. You can put it in a binder or just keep it as a saved file on your computer. And then we will jump on a live like this in the private Facebook group and we'll talk about that day's topic. I have someone, a special guest coming on day four. She is a life coach and amazing. And she's going to talk about setting boundaries and not letting people, you know, abuse you and make you stay until midnight, squeezing them in and having no life and not being able to take a vacation or spend time with your family. We're going to talk about branding. You know, what is your brand? Do you have a brand or do you just show up dressed in whatever the heck you feel like wearing and do you not even ever do any kind of promotional thing so you don't even know what you need a brand for? Do you know how to do a simple Facebook ad? Do you know how to target the right audience or are you just throwing something on your page and praying somebody sees it? For those of you that don't do Facebook ads, I'm learning through what I'm doing, trying to reach colors throughout the country that Facebook ads are very complicated. There's a lot to it. So if you're clicking that boost button, basically all you're doing by boosting is you're having a higher percentage chance that the people that already follow you on that page will see your post. You are not reaching new clients. This is something that's the biggest misconception that I see in hairdressers. They're like, but I'm boosting, I'm boosting, I'm spending money on ads, I'm boosting. You're not. So Facebook changed the algorithms because people were getting too salesy. There was all these Scentsy Candle people and Rodan and Fields and all these jewelry companies and everybody was killing everybody on their Facebook page with buy my thing. So Facebook was like, oh crap, people aren't gonna come on here and just look at little Susie's son's graduation picture, which is the connection is what Facebook was all about. So they started to lose that and it became this big infomercial like a QVC or an HSN. So the powers that be at Facebook said, okay, we have to change this because people are gonna start going away. So the boost is your ability, you know, I'll have my best friend say to me, I didn't see that on your Facebook. And I'm like, oh, I put it on two days ago. Like I would think you would have seen it, but it's not even hitting all the people in our friend list. So if you post something and you think, if you have a thousand friends and you post something and you say, oh my gosh, a thousand people saw that and nobody came and got their hair done, a thousand people did not see it the same 20 people that see your stuff all the time are seeing it because they've seen something, they've liked it, they've commented, and that's why you're now in their feed. So like when you're watching these coffee chats, if you just sit and watch and you don't say anything, you're not doing anything, you know, 
engaging, talking to me, then I'm not going to show up in your feed because it doesn't show Facebook that you cared what I was saying. So that's kind of how it works. So you may be feeling defeated behind the chair saying, why isn't anybody coming? I'm doing these great Facebook posts, but that's why. And then interesting facts, I was doing a little homework this morning. <clears throat> I think too, people don't do enough research on the online platform. So they don't really understand what the demographic is. You have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Snapchat, you have LinkedIn. You have, um, my God, I could go on and on and on with all, it used to be Periscope, which a lot of you I um, connected with on Periscope. I miss those days. Um, but it's a different audience on every single platform. And if you do a post and you just blast it across every platform, you're speaking to different people on every platform. So a fun, funky ad that you're putting on Facebook you're reaching an older demographic on Facebook than you are on Instagram and Snapchat. Snapchat is teenagers up to like, I think 25 is now considered old for Snapchat from what I hear. So Instagram tends to be the average of 18 to 34. And 34 is something new. It used to be 18 to 22 or something. It was like really young. And now people my age are starting to go over and see how powerful it is. And now the age range is going up. And by the time it goes up further, all the 18 to 34s will move on to something else. It's just the way it is. So who is your target? Who are you trying to get into your chair? Do you want 18 to 34? They tend to be the lived in color people. So if that's your demographic and that's what you love to do, that's great. But just know that if you have a bread and butter, gray haired client every week coming in your chair, you only need 200 clients total to be booked solid. If you have a lived in clientele, I didn't sit down and figure out the math, but I can only guess it's probably double minimum. So now you're going to need 400 loyal clients to be booked all the time because they're not coming as frequently. So, <coughs> excuse me, take the time and figure out who, what is your brand? Who do you want to serve? Do you want the guy's haircut every 15 minutes, quick in and out loyal guys? That's great. And they are super, super loyal, but it's really hard on your body to see a different guest every 15 minutes. And men tend to only want to spend $20, $25 on a haircut. So if you can get a retouch client to sit in your chair and do two of those in the same amount of time you would have done two men's haircuts, it's going to be more than double the income in that same amount of time. And a client sitting processing for 30 minutes is not physical on your body of doing another men's haircut. So these are the things as a 50 plus year old woman I can look back at and see like, wow, I really should have been so much more intentional with my career because you really do have control over how you work, what your hours are, how many people you see in a day. Do you want to spend more time with one person or have more people and spend less time? Are you always running behind? If you're always running behind, your book is going to be the equivalent of like a boat with a giant hole in it. You fill it up with water and you have all this water in your boat and then you're like, where did that, where did it go? It, it went away, it fell out. So it's kind of like a tire with a slow leak or a balloon that you put a pin in and you squeeze the air out slowly. Over time, you're going to see that you're gonna have turnover, things are gonna change. And if you're not paying attention, all of a sudden you're in this career doing things that you don't want to do. So take charge come to boot camp. I'm going to put the link for those of you that did not join yet. I want to make sure that you have the link. Um, boot camp is totally free. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be, you know, able to reach you guys and have everything in printable PDFs. If you can't make one of the lessons, don't sweat it, sign up anyway, because you're going to be able to go into the private Facebook group and watch the videos and you won't miss a thing. But being live is always best because you're going to be able to get your own questions answered in the live versus watching it back on the replay. So I hope to see you guys um, in there. Corey says, finally seeing you live. Welcome, Corey. I hope to see you on more lives. 
Um, Jeanette, love your chats. Jeanette, thank you so much and thanks for showing up. And Sandy says 50 plus, amen. I know, you know what? Anybody who is in the 50 plus club who's on here with me, kudos to you guys because we have worked our asses off and we had to be in this industry in such a different time when we had to, I talk about it all the time on here, we had to go around and put flyers on windshield wipers. We had to go and join those business groups to do networking and talk to people at cocktail parties. We had to have our little elevator pitch on hand at all times to be able to tell people what we do. We had to do, you know, moms of our kids' friends from school. We had to get to know them and do their hair so that we could do their sister's hair, their mother's hair, their aunt's hair. So we had to do a much more grassroots campaign and make an organic reach of our clients. But I will say, in hindsight, we had much more loyalty. So I do miss that for my girls that are still at my salon that my daughter now owns. I feel for them because it's much harder to get someone to make a move, especially that every four week person with the great coverage, they're comfortable, they're in a routine, and they usually love where they're going. But guess what makes them leave and look for you to go to a different salon? Making them wait, taking them for granted, getting their back wet when they get shampooed. I talked about on another coffee chat how we lost a client just because she said every single time she came, she had water down her back and nobody seemed to care. Well, she never said anything and nobody even knew she had water down her back. So now we have Jennifer's Bib Buddy I talk about all the time. Check out Bib Buddy. It's a Velcro vinyl little cape that goes on Superman style and you hook it here and you place the bib into the sink so that when you're rinsing underneath the hair and you're really getting in there and getting that color off, it runs into the sink and not down their back. So those small little things that make a huge difference in customer service. Um, so, and we'll talk about that as well. There's a whole day in the boot camp about customer service, marketing, setting yourself apart from your competition. Um, so let me talk about each, each day and then I'm going to let you guys go. So day one is branding. Day two is scheduling and pricing for success. Day three is what we're talking about today, using social media and targeting your exact ideal client. Day four, my favorite self-preservation and boundaries with my life coach, Alejandra. And day five, all about how education is the absolute key to your success. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always gotten. That is my favorite, favorite quote. So I'm going to end on that note. Thank you so much for joining me for coffee and colorful conversation. And hang up and do your damn homework. Go back and look for those holes. And then we're going to talk in boot camp about how to get ahead of them. So it's May. Don't wait until July to prepare for August. Let's prepare for July and August now in May so you don't have any holes and you make more in 2019 than you did in 2018. Have a great day.